Uh, my full name is Widiat Moko, and I came from Jakarta, Indonesia. I work at the Department of Urology, Cipto Mangun Kusumo Hospital, and I work as the staff of the Division of the Andrology and Stone Surgery at there. I uh, received the patient that uh, have the erectile dysfunction and mm. it, it doesn't respond it with medical treatment. Mm. And an endocrine personal injection, it, it doesn't really respond with it. So I think uh, I have to find another way, mm. another alternative therapy to treat these patients. Mm. And then uh, I read about the penile implanter in Asia and I found you. And I think you are the one of the big implanter in Asia. Mm. Mm, the whole of your clinic in here, the whole persons, the you, and the your patient, I like it a lot because uh, I think in Indonesia there is no place like this. Uh, I studied about the penile implants, and then it is uh, using the local anesthesia, mm -hmm. and then this clinic is a private clinic with a good management, and I will build the first penile mm. processing center in Indonesia, I think because there is no center in like this in Indonesia. You have to do a stroll approach. Yes. It'll look better. Don't touch your penis into the area. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So that they can make the people know about this treatment. Like I said, uh, irritable dysfunction suffer, ma makes men suffer, not just physically, but the mentally. Not just them. Their family, their society will suffer as well. So treating them is, a, you know, make the society healthier. So I want to be a part of the better good, I'll say, to, you know, so that I can treat the others whom I can treat. I can't. I cannot treat Indonesian patient. The cultural differences, you know, logistically that's so far, but uh, Indonesian doctors can treat them as well. Since well, Dr. Atomoko, so far I've seen, he's a very energetic, dedicated people and uh, training them is also a huge joy to me, you know. Um, seeing a lot of people like I do, the, the, those who are interested in my job, I can feel a sincere, you know, a joy through that. Third part of the reason why I try to, you know, train them is that during the training period, I train myself as well. Surgery to my, give my patient better surgery, so that's the reason why I keep doing this training. We do not have that kind of data with the Asian patients. We do not have a, that kind of training center, facility, nor research center in my country. Not just my country, but uh, not just South Korea, but the uh, whole Asian continent, we do not have a uh, facility like that. So I really wanted to succeed and uh, you know, keep doing that throughout the Asian continent as well. Uh, we can invent or renovate the devices better for the Asian populations or you know there's a something different with the Asian populations or there are many things we have to think about or demo, patient demographics and uh, surgical techniques many things can be implemented and uh, many things can be researched but it cannot be done with the surgery it cannot be done with the research so that's why I uh, we had decided to start the research center at the same time the research center's the ultimate goal is a better patient care it can be done through a training and the research and the practice itself. Altogether, ultimately, it will result in a better practice. After all, medicine is a sharing. We share more, we get trained more, and we become a better physician so that we can serve our, our patients better. So uh, what I want them to learn from my training is uh, uh, this surgery is, is for the patient's satisfaction. Back in the days, we physicians usually treat the disease like a life or death, cancer, something like that. So, because you know we were deciding patients' treatment, we kind of you know decide them what to do or not. But a paradigm shift is happening with the medicine as well. These days, I believe what is more important we have to look into is not just the disease, but the quality of the patient's life. Not deciding the, their I mean treatments or their you know whatever they do. We do not I mean decide it anymore. We give the choice to the patient. We inform them, we give them information what they need, but we ask their choice what to do. So what I wish them to learn most is that we physicians are not the one who decides. We are just serving to serve the patient better.